So hi dudes, Alex Forrest here vlogging on a misty cloudy Sunday afternoon in Warsaw, Poland. Buy my books you bastards, well that means buy volume 1 of 52 first dates part 1 to 6. Limited offer only for the next, I think probably two months. If you email me at alexstreetstories.co.uk I will furnish you with your own free Kindle copy of 52 first dates. Look out for part 9. Part 9, which is going to be released in a couple of weeks' time. I've finally had time to resume the individual books. You can buy them both on Kindle, but you can also buy them now on hardback. Uh, sorry, you can also buy them now print version, okay? So get your print version. I quite like the size of these print versions. Definitely, definitely, I think Part 8 is, is an interesting, uh, it is an interesting uh, uh, part. And... The story's kind of hotting up actually as they go on adventures in Russia and they start to get some fantabulous success with some Russian girls, but also uh, some intriguing and interesting stories in which the wheels have come off the car and there's been a spectacular crash or two. Uh, now, I'm going to be doing a series of vlogs going forward after the, you know, the 10 questions. I'm going to be doing vlogs that are going to just tell little individual stories, street approaches and dates and then little learning nuggets of learning knowledge that have come out of my uh, adventures in those two areas, um, which I hope will be of not only of interest but of actually real value to you in, in sharpening up your own daytime approach skills, your own dating skills. I'm also going to interlace those with some sort of more hard-hitting inner game relationship type stuff that uh, you know basically resonates with where I am in terms of my day game and dating adventures and this is going to be a little bit more of a hard-hitting one and up here's the question and I think it is a question that a lot of guys will uh, any guy who's actually getting out there and approaching girls and getting dates is gonna deal have to deal with going through the pain, yeah, going through the rejection. I just actually wonder whether or not keeping a buoyant uh, spirit isn't the most critical, the most essential thing for anybody who's taking an interest in this area of their life. And uh, Churchill is quoted as having said, uh, the definition of success, or at least one definition of success, is going from one failure to another without losing your enthusiasm. I think that's quite a good pithy saying to be holding in your mind and your heart as you are going on your own dating adventures. I also quite like the aphorism, uh, crush it or crash it, crush it or crash it, don't do anything else, whether it's on the daytime, whether it's during the course of a daytime approach or whether it is during, uh, whether it's during the course of the date itself, crush it or crash it. Okay, so I, I have had quite a difficult week at the end of last week because if you remember if you listened to the last vlog that I did I actually had a coffee date with a train girl whom I had a sexual mini relationship with in the autumn of last year and then the wheel came off a bit then I actually sent her a, a, a present in a card three months there having been a three month gap since we'd last seen each other and uh, we met up for a coffee date and you will be wondering what then happened? Well, a week later, I pinged her whilst I was on a ski trip with buddies, and I got the immortal response back. Uh, Thank you very much for the ping. Uh, I want us to just be friends. I don't. The next time we meet, I don't want there to be any hand holding, kissing, or caressing. Okay, so she pretty much. Uh, laid down the law as it were and it was painful I remember I was sitting up the mountain I'd taken a bit of a break from skiing uh, I was listening to a podcast in a a little drinkery in a little hut and I uh, got this message back and ouch you know you, you feel like a bit of a pincushion sometimes don't you um, and it was difficult to uh, deal with, made quite a difficult sort of afternoon. But what's interesting is that although my ego was scented, uh, looking at the bigger picture, it was actually probably the best thing that could have happened. And because it's now clear and it's now clean, 
Yeah, and let's be honest, there's nothing worse than being in the grey zone, in the twilight world of, of, of not knowing what the situation is. And, and, you know, I can now move on. Ego gets dented, your ego gets stung because no one likes to, for, for a hot girl to tell him that she just wants to be friends, in other words, if it's, if it's over. But by the same token, it's clearly, uh, uh, having spoken to her in the coffee shop like I did, it seems like I would much rather have done all of that than, than not. And if I hadn't done all of that, then I just would have been a little bit in a twilight world. And what's most important, and I think this is one of, sort of such an important thing for guys to understand, is that you've kind of only got so much headspace. Okay, you've got a limited amount of time in your life, sure, uh, and it's easy to see that, but it's not often so easy to see the amount of space that's been taken up in your psyche uh, with a girl that you're kind of wondering about. Because it's a very sinister sort of a place to be in, because it closes, it closes off doors internally, and you, you don't realise you're even doing it. Subconsciously, you are not actually open to meeting girls to uh, making approaches and I've just been speaking to a buddy actually in this coffee shop who said that you know, he'd been in a kind of a long term mini kind of a, a long term in terms of distance and a, but also long term in she's in China he's in the UK but also long term in terms of you know they're only seeing each other occasionally and, and it was interesting how when they'd let go safe journey Mark when they'd let go, uh, he was able to. It, it's so interesting. When they sort of let go of the relationship, he had uh, gone out and approached some girls during the daytime, and he'd met another Chinese girl, and he went on three dates with her, made love, sweet love, and it's just, you know, kind of flipped things round. And it's just so interesting that it was just after the decision to be made that he was going to have nothing more to do with this Chinese girl, then an opportunity presents itself, it, it, you know, the door opened. And I think that is uh, what happens if you take the pain. So if you, you're going to have the pain either way. You're going to have the pain uh, squashed and bottled up, which is where I would be had I not uh, spoken honestly directly and kind of shown my vulnerability, as it were, to train girl over coffee um, if I hadn't done that I'd just be bottling it up and it would have been closing me up in terms of the amount of headspace I've got the amount of appetite and enthusiasm I have to go after other girls the other area in which I've had to sort of confront pain and this is a bit of an odd one really is kissing okay I have over the years I've had some situations where it's been difficult to kiss a girl, particularly on the date, definitely in public, um, such that I'm now thinking it's probably best to wait until you're actually indoors before you kiss a girl. You can be physical with her, but not kissing on the lips. Um, and so, I, but just recently I've kind of run into a bit of a problem because I've had three occasions where I've kissed, tried to kiss a girl, uh, two, two, uh, two girls, not at the same time, and one was in a in the car we were parked up and she was she, she was just dropping me off at my flat and she wouldn't let me and she did that and then I've just met recently another girl as a result of going out during the daytime a few weeks ago I had two dates with her both dates have gone extremely well there's been plenty of rapport there's been plenty of spiking uh, there's been plenty of hand holding and you know, everything has kind of been right with, with, with both dates. She's a nice girl. She's, you know, she's, she's, she's just a nice girl. Good relationship material, interesting, uh, artistic, a painter, but got a regular job. Um, 30, I guess, ish. Um, and, and, and the second date was, uh, well, you know, she let me go quite a long way. She actually, I actually during the course of the conversation did that classic uh, spike which is to say oh sorry what did you just what were you just saying I was too busy looking at your tits and she goes she, her eyes rolled into the back of her, her head 
and she said uh, are, are typical and I said yeah they're really nice <laughs> and and I actually said do you mind and she let me we were stood outside the bar at the end of the date and you know I couldn't believe how far you can go the vibe, vibe is there she let me um, grab her boobies so and, and during the course of the the day earlier she'd actually said that she was quite surprised how far she'd let me go physically on the first date because on the first date I actually took her hand I put my I pulled her in as we walked off we met outside the cinema as a meeting point and walked off to the first venue and she was quite surprised at how uh, herself and letting me get as physical and as tactile as I did um, not in a and not in a negative way I think it it, you know, you know, here she was in the second date, and the texting's been great. So, all of that is good. However, at the end of that first date, I tried to kiss her, and she wouldn't let me. And at the end of this date, I tried again, and again, she wouldn't let me. And I was a bit annoyed with myself for having tried because I, I, I told myself that I wouldn't try twice. I've been burnt once, but I did try and kiss her in public, and it didn't work. And again, uh, that's a different sort of rejection. You know, the problem when I first started out with women in dating was that I wouldn't actually even try to kiss a girl. Yeah. And now anybody who's done this stuff realizes that it's far better to, you know, to try and fail than fail to try. And a girl subtly picks up on that. Uh, nevertheless, it you, you know you make your intentions quite clear, and you show that you're a man and you're interested in kissing her. Nevertheless, it was probably a bit uncalibrated, and I was probably being a bit too you know eager to move things forward because there've been very positive dates. Um, anyway, nevertheless, you do feel stunned, don't you? You do feel stunned. And that was the reason, the fear of being stung, of being rejected. It's like being, it's looked like more of a, a mini rejection, isn't it? Compared to the train girl situation, it was more of a major rejection. We had a mini relationship and she doesn't want to take it into anything longer term. Um, this is more of a, a really annoying uh, rejection at, at a smaller, much smaller level. You've kind of got to go through a period of you don't try and then you don't get anywhere and it gets sort of bottled up you do try you try and kiss a girl and then uh, she doesn't let you and then you get angry and annoyed and you feel like you haven't handled the date very well yeah but that is a much better place than not having tried at all of course you want to be calibrated and only be kissing a girl when it's when it feels right and I think that's the key thing the litmus test of the kiss is it, it just it is just there and it just feels right and you know usually it doesn't occur too late on in the date too late on in, in the evening too late on in the date in the sequence but sometimes you do come across uh, a situation where it just doesn't feel uh, right but you kind of feel that because you've been on a couple of dates you should make it happen but why hasn't it happened yet I've got to force it I think this is, you know, kind of very interesting that you you don't have to be a, a Superman seducer who escalates in the street to the bedroom in 50 minutes flat and some guys, some younger guys, certain type of guy uh, will, you know, be happy and will be successful at that. But providing you're inching the date, inching the dating sequence into, in the right direction, uh, moving it forward, not just treading water, in many ways, it doesn't matter how long it takes before you kiss a girl or have sex with a girl. So, particularly where older c girls are concerned, uh, you know, they put the brakes on because they've spent their 20s going at full throttle, yeah, and having all sorts of adventures and ending up with dangerous men, maybe some of whom they marry and end up with kids and whatnot. That's going to be a whole different uh, sort of speed of escalation if you like than if uh, you know if they are in their early 20s let's say yeah so anyway the point is that in both in both instances there's this, there's this thing there's the ego is taking this thing of having the feeling of, of rejection and when you have rejection what do you do 
you want to withdraw into your shell. Yeah, you don't want anything to do with women. You actually want to uh, take holy orders, go and uh, become a, a, a monk, live, live, live out the rest of your days in the monastery, become a hermit, become a sailor, and you know get a job as a as crew on a container ship and spend the next seven years of their life as far as you possibly, you possibly get from the female sex. You know, and fine. I think this is the thing to. You know, just think a little bit about how best one handles rejection. This is the thing. You're going to mope. And I, I mope on top of that mountain. Um, you're going to do something. You're going to have, a, if you're, a, if you're a, an ex-smoker, you're going to light up a cigarette. You're going to kind of hate yourself and be angry with yourself for, for a period of time, a few minutes, a few hours, a few days. And, and I guess that really... That's just the turbulence that comes when you go through a, a rocky period, and you just simply have to uh, roll with the punches and suck it up. And just you, you're not going to get rid of it, okay? nor are you going to cure it just by running out into the streets and approaching a whole load of girls. It's just going to have to work its way through the system. These, for me, are the two prescriptions for long-term success in dealing with the pain and the problem of rejection in the area of women and dating. The first thing is confidence. Uh, how do you generate confidence? You generate confidence by being skilled. You generate skills by practicing and application of your intelligence to outcomes of the practice to make sure that you're practicing in a right and a progressive way. Confidence is the very first thing. I felt, I feel generally reasonably confident, if not very confident, of my skills of being able to speak to girls during the daytime. Uh, to go out on dates and that just simply helps because I've spent the last four or five years learning this stuff that just simply helps dilute the, the pain of the rejection and sort of a mysterious and imaginative thing and actually uh, it, it also starts to produce give, give, give um, birth to ideas that actually you know what I don't mind that this particular girl has rejected me because I can see the possibilities there I can see that, the, that I have the possibility now that I have some skills in this area to go out and meet more attractive more interesting girls there are millions of them out there and I actually you know felt that uh, after this uh, knockback but oh, actually there's, a, there's actually quite a good plus side here I, I can actually go out and meet higher quality girls and have more interesting interactions and have you know a, a fun sex life with them as well. So that is, I think, the very first thing to say. The second thing is, which uh, follows from the first, it is to have options, to have other options. And when I got uh, kicked back by Train Girl. I, I actually had another very good, or I have another very good prospect, and a third good, not very good, but good prospect with a girl I've, I've met quite recently. Um, and again, that simply has a, a diluting effect. And I'm actually, although my ego is hurt, the real kind of me, if you like, is quite relieved that the issue is being resolved a girl who's fallen off and it makes it more simple and more straightforward going forward with uh, the girls that sort of left in the field of play for want of a better want of a better analogy and that sort of chimes back to my original remarks um, you've got more headspace then and these the sort of strange surreal and, and but sort of fantastic things that when you do uh, you know, front up to rejection and face it, you discover that in the few weeks that follow, the few days or weeks that follow, uh, you know, 
doors do open and fresh horizons do present themselves. And that therefore means that, as Churchill said, that you can move forward from one perceived failure, because obviously it's not really failure, it's just perceived outcome orientated failure, to another without losing uh, your enthusiasm. And the enthusiasm you need, of course, is for the development, for the journey, for actually acquiring the knowledge, this knowledge that I'm talking about, and one of the fundamental, most important reasons that I produce these blogs is for myself to learn from these experiences and to, you know, to, to, to become stronger and better in this area of my life. And that's where the enthusiasm uh, is sort of, that's where the enthusiasm is generated and the love of the adventure and the love of the development of the skills themselves. All right, guys, that's all for now. I look forward to vlogging and podcasting to you in the very near future. Bye for, bye for now.